Hi, welcome back. The great thing about being an astronomer is that we love summer, we have these beautiful summer days, but when everyone else is getting glum about it getting into winter, we look forward to long, clear nights. Maybe not so much in the UK where we do have quite a lot of cloud, but we do get some very long, nice, dark nights in the winter where you can come home from work, go straight out into your observatory and start imaging. So what I'd like to do in this episode is I'd like to talk to you about the camera that I use for my astro imaging. I started imaging using my Canon 550D unmodified camera. So a lot of people ask what modification means. So modification is basically when you can get the low bandpass filter taken out of the camera and that basically lets more of the infrared light into the uh, sensor. So that means that as most of the stuff in the sky is hydrogen based, like a lot of the nebulas are, then it's much easier to do uh, longer exposures and pick up all that very delicate nebulosity that we see by removing the low bandpass filter, the IR filter in the standard Canon camera, it means that you're able to capture much more of the hydrogen based nebulosity in space. So that enhances the images when you're capturing things like the North American Nebula, Witch's Broom, and it just gives you a much better result. When I first started imaging, I used my Canon 550D unmodified, as I said, attached to my Skywatcher ED80. And it was a great combination, nice and simple, and got me going for a couple of years. Then I decided that the 550D, I really wanted to move on to something that was cooled, and I still wanted to stay with DSLR and OneShot because that was where I'd started. There are basically two ways that people go with astro imaging. Either they go down the OneShot color, which is where I am at the moment, or you move on to CCD imaging, taking monochrome and then using different filters. So luminous, red, green, blue filters and you combine those together to get the colour images. The advantage of that is you get a lot more definition. Under British skies, sometimes it can be difficult to get a long enough period to do CCD imaging, which is why I went down the one shot colour. That's not to say over the next couple of years that I won't go back and review my choice and look at some of the CCD or even the CMOS based mono imaging cameras like the ZWO range which I kind of take a liking to. So when I was looking around the market I wanted to stay with the DSLR CMOS filter and a couple of my friends have been and bought these modified cameras from the South Korean company, Central DS. So I leapt in as well. Uh, I got a, basically it's a modified Canon EOS 600D that has been completely stripped down. It retains the original sensor and software, so it's compatible with things like SGB Pro and Backyard EOS. What Central DS do, is they take the basic Canon camera and you can get various models modified. They take out the IR filter, the low bandpass filter, and they take the sensor and put it into a new body with the Peltier cooler and a filter tray in front of the sensor. The Peltier cooler cools the sensor down to up to minus 33 degrees centigrade below ambient and what that does is gives you much better images so there's less noise sometimes you don't even have to bother with darks because you don't get as many hot pixels and it gives you a really great result so I've been very happy with the camera that I got I know that they do more expensive Canon cameras so they do full frames but that's probably a bit out of my league at this point in time so here's the camera well 1.55 kilograms of it and like a standard Canon we attach it to the scope with a T-mount so we line up the red dot with the red dot, twist, and it clicks into place like this very easily. And now the barrel goes into the scope. Field flattener on here. And this is how it fits onto the back of the scope. This one's got three screws that you just tighten up. It's very important to make sure that when you push it home, you get it nice and square otherwise you get a gradient as I found to my cost across the frame. There we go. So now we've got the camera on the scope we just connect the USB to the laptop. We've got the controller. So that's this thing here DTC3 power 
and it's all ready to go. The CDS 600D2 uses the standard Canon 600D CMOS imaging chip. It uses a Digic 4 processor. The sensitivity ranges from ISO 100 to 12800. It will do a live view mode. One of the features that I really like about the camera is the filter tray that's inserted in front of the lens. So it comes with these uh, filter holders. I bought a few extra ones and they take the two inch circular filters. The way it works is you just clip the filter out like that. You can see that's my light pollution all neatly labelled up. And then I insert the filter in here. Goes in really easily. As you can see, I've also got neutral density. Use that when I'm imaging the moon. I can't be bothered to get my ZWO 120 monochrome camera out. And I may also have a hydrogen alpha, which I use for narrow band imaging. What central DS throw away is basically the mirror box, the viewfinder, the autofocus, the auto dust removal feature, LCD control buttons, the flash strobe, the lithium ion battery, there's no video, there's no HDMI, they've taken out the microphone, the shutter speed control and the movie mode. Central DS provide a one year warranty that comes with the camera. The low pass filter has been removed. It's a three to two aspect ratio. It takes the uh, raw image formats. It's got the Digic 4 processor and the ISO sensitivity goes from 100 to 12800. You can still use live view mode. When I unboxed the new camera, the first thing I did was to put it on the back of my Skywatcher ED80 scope. And when I put it on the first night, I watched the focuser unravel. So the camera was just too heavy for the Skywatcher focuser and it just would not hold its focus. In fact, it would not stay wound into the telescope tube. I looked at upgrading the focuser on my Skywatcher ED80, but it was quite a lot of money relative to the cost of the scope. So that's when I upgraded my scope. The telescope that I use is a refractor. It's a triplet. It's an APM 107 700. And I'll talk about that in a further video. As you can see, there are three basic connections into the camera. There's one which is the USB 2 lead, which I connect straight into my laptop. The second one is for power, the 12 volt. I run that down to my scope. I've got mine coming out of the rig runner, which also powers my dew bands and my electric focuser and a couple of other gadgets that I can talk about as well. And then there's the fat cable here, which runs to the temperature control. And you can adjust that up and down. As I said, it cools down to minus 33 below ambient. This time of the year, midsummer, we're getting 30 degrees during the day. So obviously it's not gonna get uh, very cold given the ambient temperature, but it does operate very satisfactorily. Another advantage of this setup is that it's very easy to take darks because when you finish, you can leave the uh, camera set up and unlike the EOS 550D, which wasn't cooled, when I'd finished imaging, it would be getting light and the temperature goes up. With an uncooled camera, it's very hard to capture your darks at the same temperature as the lights that you've taken, unless you can do it the same evening when it's still dark and the same conditions. I used to put mine in the fridge, but with the CDS Pro 2, you can keep the cooler running while you take your darks. Even if it takes several hours and it goes into daylight, as long as it's not on the maximum cooling setting, because as the air temperature comes up, it will struggle to hold its temperature. I got this camera back in 2015 and there weren't as many alternative choices on the market. It was either basically a modified CMOS digital camera like this one, the Canon, or it was go to uh, CCD cameras. I paid approximately 1800 uh, British pounds for this. I think that's about uh, 2,400 American dollars. But I had to pay the exorbitant amount of just about 400 pounds customs duty when I went to collect it from the warehouse. Would I recommend the Central DS Pro 2? I think that all depends on what you want to do. Certainly back in 2015 when I got it, it was really the only way to go for me if I didn't want to go on to CCD. However, there are lots of new alternatives on the market now, and I think if you were going to buy one of these, it would certainly be worth comparing it with some of the other CMOS censored powered astro imaging cameras such as the ZWO range. I'm very happy with my setup but I think if I was going to expand further I would definitely look at some of the more modern cameras that are on the market now and the prices of all these have come down dramatically but it is worth checking out Central DS 
I should also mention that I'm definitely not sponsored by Central DS or anyone else for that matter, but this was the setup that I chose because it seemed like the best value and the best way of progressing with DSLR imaging at the time. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel.